Whether someone is colorblind isn't exactly a black and white question. Really? Puns? Yeah, but that was like, it's like the best way of saying it. Right? Okay, look, what I'm trying to say is that you can't sort people into two tidy bins of normies and the colorblind. There is a spectrum of colorblindness severity that ranges from normal color vision all the way to a full Civil War photo. There are even forms of abnormal color vision that are functionally indistinguishable from normal color vision. In fact, about 38% of males who are not colorblind have a mutant cone that very slightly shrinks their gamut. That sounds dirty. Yeah, yeah it does. No, gamut is actually the sum of all colors that an individual can see. Which is why I never understood why they don't call these things run the gamut. I mean, it, it kind of seems like low-hanging fruit. So what is the threshold on this picture that determines whether someone is colorblind? Well, there isn't one. You can take a test that determines the type and severity of your colorblindness, but unless you are an achromat, uh, asking whether you're colorblind isn't a question that lies in your eyes, it's a question that lies in your heart. Too cheesy. Yeah, that was, that was bad, that was bad. Now start by asking yourself, do I feel colors? Now I'm not talking about some weird braille version 2.0 thing, I mean, how intuitive are colors for you? Now let's ask some specific questions. Does our combined language of color line up well with your perception of color? Or do you think it's stupid that both of these colors are called green? Do you need to take time to routinely squint or consider or examine an object in order to figure out what color it is? Do you notice patterns and textures of objects before you think about their color? For example, I just flashed a picture of Michael Jackson if you're color normal, you might remember what color jacket he was wearing. If you're color blind, you might have not even begun to consider the color of the image in the short time that you could see it. Do you have little interest in hobbies that concern color, such as painting or flower arranging? Uh, then you might be color blind. I personally did not appreciate paintings until I discovered artists who use more texture and contrast than they do color. For example, like Ivanka Trump, I love Goya. That is not what I meant. I, I, I meant Goya, the artist. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a generic beans guy myself. Now, most of you will probably want something a little bit more objective, whether it's for your own curiosity or for selecting the right color corrective lenses or even getting a driver's license in some countries. And for that, there are a whole arrangement of tests that you can take. Now the tests are grouped into four categories. We have naming, arranging, matching, and pseudo-isochromatic because one guy's always gotta look smarter than his friends. Naming tests are pretty straightforward. Uh, you are shown a color and you say the name of that color. Uh, something like the lantern test, for example, where you have small lights that are either green, red, or yellow, are common in the, the Navy or for train companies or anything transportation based that highly relies on green, red, and yellow signal lights. The lantern test is indeed a little bit of a blunt instrument and people generally call it a screening for gross color blindness, but I still think it's a much better tool than its cousin, the jack-o'-lantern test. Arranging tests make you order a bunch of colored tiles into a constant gradient. The test that you see here is the D15 test, which contains 15 tiles and is fairly common at the eye doctors. There is also the more extreme FM100 hue test, which as you can probably guess, contains 88 hues. Matching tests give you a reference color and have you either select another color that matches or to mix a color that matches. This includes the antiquated Holmgren's wool, which has been around for about 150 years and was one of the first widely accepted tests for colorblindness, as well as Noggle's Anomaloscope, which is more or less the gold standard now and has you mix two primary colors of light to try and match some yellowy reference color. Pseudoisochromatic tests, including the well-known Ishihara plates, use colors that are almost the same. They hide an image or a number in a field of color noise such that only trichromats can see it. 
digital forms of this test are called mosaic tests and add additional color noise by animating the brightness of individual pixels or squares. Except for the relatively new mosaic test, all of the other tests were developed 50 to 150 years ago in an analog world. Most of them have been reproduced digitally, and in fact, one good place to find all of these tests together, at least a digital representation of them, is on colorlightlens.com. Now, these digital tests can diagnose, or as I should say, screen for types of red-green color blindness and blue-yellow color blindness. Some of them can tell you an indication of the severity of your color blindness, but they can only do so much. For the most part, they have a lot of problems when it comes to mild forms of color deficiency and therefore lead to a lot of false positives where someone thinks they're colorblind when they're not, or false negatives where someone thinks they have normal vision when they are actually colorblind. In addition to that, they're also particularly bad at differentiating protans from dutans. In my case, when I take the Enchroma pseudoisochromatic test on my laptop, the result is consistently strong dutan. However, when I take the same test on my phone, which has a significantly different type of screen, I get back a result of strong protan. I'm, you, you could almost say that the test is, is colorblind blind, and it matters because depending on whether the result is protan or dutan, I would buy a completely different kind of color corrective glasses from them. And this just shows the downfall of taking these tests through a computer screen. You're always going to have a lot of uncertainty. And that's why we always recommend that you go to an eye doctor to take an analog test. And this is always going to be a problem with taking colorblind tests digitally through a screen. Because that screen adds so much imprecision to the results that you're going to get back. For example, results are highly dependent on your gamma settings, your, your brightness and your contrast, on the color gamut of your screen. So depending on if it is a backlit LED or an AMOLED, ambient light of your viewing space, they're going to depend on the over compression of that image, which was intended only to be seen in bitmap and now is being shown in JPEG and is completely useless. So if you really want to be certain what type and severity of color blindness you have, do not trust an online test. Even if your screen is calibrated, there is still so much imprecision in the results. Just go to an eye doctor, go to your optometrist or ophthalmologist and take an analog test that will be able to much more reliably tell you what your type and severity is. I would look for one, if you think you have red green color blindness anyway, that can give you an anomaloscope test. Otherwise, a D15 test is much more common uh, and almost as good. And the Ishihara test, which is arguably the most common, is still fine and better than any online test as long as the doctor knows how to appropriately interpret the results, which is not always. Finally, here is a list of things that are definitely not colorblind tests. Looking at colorblind simulating images. Now, these are intended for color normal people to have a better understanding of what life is like through colorblind eyes for them to empathize with us or pity us or, or whatever, but they are not a test. Thinking none of these images look the same to me, I must be fine, means nothing. Unless you are a dichromat, which is rarer than being an anomalous trichromat, the images should not look the same to you, and it does not mean that you are not colorblind. Looking at Ishihara plates on Reddit, look. Trolls often post things that look like pseudo-isochromatic plates, but are indeed isochromatic plates, as in there is no image in there, nobody can see it. They want to make normal-sighted people think that they're colorblind and don't trust things you find on Reddit. Looking at an Ishihara test on a shirt. I once saw a guy wearing a shirt with a pseudo-isochromatic plate on it that read, fuck the colorblind, which obviously was not intended to be seen by colorblind people, except either through irony or stupidity was visible to all colorblind people. So don't trust that. Also, this fake ass book from Amazon um, with plates like this, which are not pseudo isochromatic and definitely not Ishihara, um, these colors are the same color of different brightnesses, which means everyone 
can see this. It's called a control plate, and that's pretty much all that is in here. Finally, the colorblind quiz is in no way a diagnostic test, but we'll get into that in the next video. This is Chromophobe.